Blessed be the one holy and living God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work the first of his acts long, of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, 
Then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only in that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Children up to third grade are invited to gather at the cross near the choir loft during the last verse of the sequence hymn for the reading of the Gospel in Children's Chapel.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the holy and undivided Trinity. Amen. Well, Matt was scheduled to preach today because our youth are leaving on pilgrimage this afternoon. Unfortunately, about 30 minutes ago, Matt tested positive for COVID. So, your prayers for Matt, for Nicole, who is now leading our pilgrimage. <laughs> For me, as I preach, <laughs> luckily, I have been, so the joke among preachers is um, on Trinity Sunday, it's always the lowest person on the totem pole, Barbara, <laughs> who gets to preach. And I have been that person enough that I think I can say something today about the Trinity. Uh, and I like to start talking about the Trinity with Augustine, because I think he... Um, sums up kind of how I feel about the Trinity. The story goes that he was walking on the beach, um, pondering the deep mystery of God, the Holy Trinity, and he met a little boy on the beach who had dug a hole in the sand. And he was very busy running back and forth from the hole to the ocean, collecting water and pouring it in the hole. Augustine was curious about this, and so he asked the boy, what are you doing? And the boy said, I'm going to pour the entire ocean into this hole. Augustine said, that is impossible. The whole ocean will not fit into your hole. And the boy answered Augustine, a messenger from God perhaps, neither can the infinite God, the Holy Trinity, fit into your mind. <laughs> well, there you go. Maybe that's the sermon for today. But I'll say a little bit more. So today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. It's always the first Sunday after the Pentecost in the Christian calendar, and the only day on the Christian calendar dedicated to a doctrine in the church, not a person, not an event. And how true is Augustine's revelation? Our minds are limited and finite. They cannot possibly know all there is to know about the unlimited and infinite God in three persons, blessed trinity as we sing. Over the centuries, though, much ink has been spilled and many books have been written on the deep mystery of the Christian faith, God, the Holy Trinity. Theologians of the early church, councils, great debates, all about this doctrine. And yet when all is said and done, God, the Holy Trinity, remains our deepest mystery. <clears throat> How did we come to this idea of God as three in one? We started out as people who worship many gods. Then God came to Abraham and told him to leave his home in Ur of the Chaldeans and set out into the place that God would show him to worship the one God, Yahweh. No more could their gods be carved in stone or cast in metal where many deities abounded often at odds with one another. Moses proclaimed one God, worship only Yahweh. Later on, Isaiah tells us of a God who was holy, holy, holy beyond all human attempts to package and control. Would you get me a cough drop or a cup of water? 
but the transcendent God who lived on top of a mountain and who could only be experienced at a distance by a select few was not enough. So along came Jesus, claiming that he too was God, <clears throat> performing miracles in the name of God, forgiving sins as if he was God. He said challenging things that reshaped the way we thought <coughs> Thank you. about the God we knew from the Israelites. But how do we make sense of this in light of the commandment to worship only one true God? <coughs> then to confuse things even more, Jesus began to talk about another God who would come after him, the comforter, the advocate, the spirit of truth. Last week on Pentecost, we talked about the coming of the Holy Spirit and Jesus' promise of this God who would always be with us, not removed from us, but here among us. So is it one God or is it three? The doctrine of the Trinity was created to try to make sense of that question. The word Trinity is not anywhere in scripture. It was a word and a doctrine that the early church came up with to try to explain how God could be one God but three persons. <clears throat> Much later, St. Patrick used the shamrock to try to explain it. <coughs> three parts of one leaf. I've even heard Neapolitan ice cream used as a way to talk about the Trinity. Maybe we should have had, instead of popsicles last week, we could have ice cream this week. Others use words like personas to try to describe it, the three faces of God. We speak about God and the Trinity using words like creator, redeemer, and sanctifier to talk about the different functions of the three persons of God. Some use gendered words to talk about the three persons of God to imply more of the fullness of who God is, God the Almighty, Jesus the incarnate word, and Sophia, the Greek feminine word for wisdom, which is used for the spirit. Augustine, that I mentioned earlier, described the Trinity as lover, beloved, and the love between them is the spirit. I like that one. There was so much argument about the idea of how God could be one, but also three, that a council was called at Nicaea in 325 because we always think in church, a good meeting will fix anything. <laughs> and after a great deal of verbal slugging and name calling, the Nicene Creed was born, settling once and for all, they thought, the problem of the Trinity. Unfortunately, that did not end the debate, not surprisingly. It created more debate, more creeds were written, and still today, entire books are written just to debate this hard to wrap our minds around doctrine. So why does it all matter? Why do we set aside a day for this doctrine? Well, it mattered to them then because they were trying to fight accusations from the people around them that they were polytheists and that they were trying to explain that no, they did not worship multiple gods. But I think it matters to us today because for me at least, it helps me embrace a little more mystery about God and how God relates to us. Not that we're trying to explain God because we know we can never fully wrap our head around that, but because talking about God as three in one reminds us of the ways that God is with us and how God invites us to relate to each other. That idea of lover beloved and the love between us. Some theologians use a Greek word, perichoresis, to talk about the Trinity. It literally means dancing around in a circle. Usually when somebody talks about Greek, it's not that interesting, is it? <laughs> so I like this idea of describing the dance of the eternal three in one, each distinct yet a part of each other, each pouring out love and grace into each other in the dance. With other ancient civilizations, their gods were often at war with each other. They were rivals. Christians were clear that this relationship between the three persons of the Trinity was different than that. No rivalry, all part of the same whole. No competition, but this dance of persons mutually affirming, mutually caring. 
It reflects the essence of God that is relationship, that is community, unconditional love and union. It's a reminder that God is a relational God who wants connection with us, desires that we be in relationship with each other. It reflects the mutuality that should characterize all of our relationships. The other thing the doctrine of the Trinity does for us is remind us that God comes to us and meets us in our place of need. One theologian said, sometimes we need God the Father. Sometimes we need God the Brother. Sometimes we need the Spirit of God our friend. The doctrine of the Trinity holds together the transcendence of that God up on the mountain that we talked about, the all-powerful, all-knowing God who provides a strength and power that can sustain us through whatever life brings. It also holds the imminence of God, the closeness of God in Jesus, Emmanuel, who is God with us, the God who took on human flesh so he could more fully understand what it was like to have flesh and bones and pain and suffering and joy. Not a holy other God, but a God who is intimately close. And it holds, too, this image of the God who never leaves us. The spirit who is by our side no matter what, who doesn't reside on top of a mountain far away, who doesn't need human flesh even to be close to us, but who is able to be with us every waking moment and through the long nights. A God who is our comforter, our help in decision making, the one who guides us into all truth. While all this talk about the Trinity may feel distant and removed from us, it is so important to the church that life itself begins and ends with those sacred words of the Trinitarian formula. At the baptism of children, as we did last week, people come and a baby is baptized with the sacred words, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And at the end of life, in that sacred moment, we are anointed in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the God who created you, the Christ who redeemed you, and the Holy Spirit who sanctifies you. These Trinitarian words are so important in our tradition that they are the bookends for the beginning and the end of our life here on earth, and hopefully the inspiration for our life in between, the source of our unending life in God. Thanks be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today are Form 4-6, found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer and in your bulletin. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, Jewel, Sally, Bob, Pam, Ron, Rod, Sally, Colleen, Jenny, Anne, Ida Mae, Jane, Stephanie, Wayne and Judy, Evan, Kathy, Larry, Emily. For Jessica and Dwayne Burns, who await the adoption of a child, and for Claire and Cody Chaffins, Megan and Lorraine Fryhopal, and Kylie and Evan Gibbs, all awaiting the birth of children, and for friends and family, Isabel, Betty, Dave, Rosalind, Nikki, Susie, Karen, Diana, Peggy, Russell, Sophia, David and Jen, Karen, Cindy, Parvin, Stephen, Doris, Judy, Martha, Mike, Bonnie, Katie, Anne, Alicia, and people everywhere living in situations of violence and those who work for peace. I invite you to add your own intercessions. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life and especially for the youth and adults of Epiphany and Holy Trinity Parish who will be on pilgrimage to Nashville beginning this afternoon. Jacob, Will, Elena, Maya, Acria, Ariel, Ivy, Boyd, Garen, Jessa, Ada, Piper, Riley, Brady, Matt, Emily, Nicole, Christian, Rhett, Kay, and Lorraine. I ask, I invite you to add your own thanksgivings. We will exalt you, O God, our King. 
We pray for all who have died, especially Linda Best, cousin of Bob Thompson, Dorothy Gray, mother-in-law of Lisa Gray, Patrick McGoey, friend of Ann Warner, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us, through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be always with you. Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Epiphany. It's so good to worship with you today and to those of you who are worshiping through live stream. We're glad that you can join us. Um, if you're a visitor with us today, we hope you'll take a moment and fill out the card in the pew rack and either give it to the clergy at the door or place it in the offering plate as it goes by. We're really glad um, to welcome you today. If you're not a guest with us today, I hope you're remembering to wear your name tag because that helps uh, visitors and members alike to be able to greet you by name. So um, we appreciate you doing that. Summer breakfasts have returned-ish. <laughs> um, we, we are depending on you to sign up to bring something. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but there is a sign up for that. The V-Pod provides the coffee. Um, and I think there, is there bread today? <laughs> I'm Facebook friends with Paul, and I noticed there was blueberry bread posted on his Facebook page. So if you stay after the service today, you can have some coffee and blueberry bread and enjoy some time together, and I hope that you'll do that. And if you'd like to sign up to bring something in the future, um, there is a sign up for that. 
We'll be doing a contemplative labyrinth afternoon, evening today, four o'clock. We're gonna meet in the courtyard. Um, the labyrinth will be set up in the parish hall. We'll have some uh, instruction time together, discussion time together, and then you can either go walk the labyrinth after that or do some walking meditation around the grounds or just have some silence, but always a good way for us to be together in that way. Um, a new book study is beginning this week, I think, on the 14th. Um, yeah, that's this week. Ellen Mintzmeyer and Susan Ashmore are leading a study of the Book of Forgiving, the Fourfold Path for Healing Ourselves and Our World by Desmond Tutu and his daughter Mfo. And so it's happening Tuesdays at 7.30. There is a sign up for that as well, and I hope that you will. I think that's a powerful book and some great teachers as well. Um, you'll find information in your bulletin about DEEM collections for the month of June. Um, and I also want to remind you that all active parishioners should have gotten an email on June 3rd to take our congregational assessment survey. We hope that you will respond because that's why we're asking you. That's why we're surveying you because we take your responses seriously and we're begin, begin doing some strategic planning for the future and your responses have an impact on that. So if you didn't get that email and you want to get the survey, um, you can talk to me or to Shay and we'll make sure that you get that. Um, last thing today is our pilgrimage blessing. Do you want to invite invite them forward? Yeah. If you're going on the pilgrimage, will you join us here on the steps? And as they make their way up, um, we are going to Nashville for this pilgrimage, and we're hoping to s explore the many sides of Nashville. So often when we go to a city, we and are exposed to the touristy side, and we're going to do some of that, going to the uh, Country Music Hall of Fame um, and the Af new African American Music Museum, which I'm really excited about because I've heard such good things about it. But we're also going to see and explore the civil rights history in Nashville while we're there. We're going to volunteer at a place called People Loving Nashville. Um, to watch and to learn from how they are accompanying uh, folks who are experiencing homelessness in Nashville. Um, we're also going to take a tour with folks who are experiencing Nashville, a tour of Nashville through their eyes. Um, so we're really hoping to, uh, to provide several sites of encounter for the youth, encountering neighbor, encountering God, encountering one another and God in themselves in new ways. And we do need your prayers as we're on for safe travel, for good health, and for openness, that we might be open to the spirit at God, of God at work in us while we're gone. So. All right. Um, and this is only a portion of the people who are going, because right. as she mentioned, Holy Trinity is partnering with us in this pilgrimage. And so we remember them this morning as well as we pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of the journey, there are times when you call us to leave the familiar, to leave our comfort zone, to journey out with you. And so as this group embarks on pilgrimage, may their eyes be open to new experiences. May their ears be open to hear you speaking. May they remember the sacred encounters on the way and notice the places they have been transformed. May the God who created them guide their footsteps. May the Son who redeems them share their journey. And may the Holy Spirit who sanctifies them lead them on as they go on life's pilgrimage. And may God's blessings be with them as they go. Amen. Amen. One more update I wanted to give you as they're going back to their seats about the HVAC. <laughs> Um, I don't have much of an update for you except to say that the dumpster is gone, which I take to be a really good sign. That means all the deconstruction is gone. The big AC unit that sits outside my office, I noticed that is gone as well. So what they're working on now is reinstalling new duct work, um, and hopefully that will be completed shortly and we'll have temporary AC coming up very soon, which is great news since it's starting to get hot. So thanks for your patience um, as all of that work continues and hopefully I'll have a more clear date for you coming up very shortly on that. 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your own creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you today and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. to the world singing a new song according to the power of the Spirit.